Once again, Destined to be Goblin goes international, and today we're talking turkey. Turkish munchies. Hello, goblins and goblinettes. Welcome back to another edition of Destined to be Goblin. Destin Goblin here. This is where I will try a food product of some kind, maybe something you didn't even know existed, and I will decide whether or not I should give it my Destined Goblin seal of approval. <laughs> well, today's video has the potential to be actually quite a long one, so uh, if this one runs really long, if it's too long to watch all in one sitting, watch it in pieces maybe, we'll see. Uh, but we're going to be doing an unboxing and we're going to try some of these delights from Turkish Munchies. Now, if you have not seen these yet, you can get these on Amazon. They have several different types of packages. I actually have another one of these as well that I'm going to do in the future. Uh, but this is sort of like their basic package here. There are supposed to be both sweet and savory snacks in here. It comes all nicely shrink wrapped. Um, it's got a little uh, description booklet inside, which will tell you all of the different treats that are in there. And uh, these are all products from Turkey. So these are all Turkish delight type of things that we've got in here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the shrink wrap and get started. I do have Monster Mug loaded with some nice cold water. I figure that would be a pretty good palate cleanser for the ones that we actually try. Uh, I am not going to sample absolutely everything in here. Um, I think there's uh, over 20 pieces in here, uh, maybe even more than that. Um, but uh, we are going to try a few of these. Okay, so right off the bat, we get that nice little chart, that pamphlet that I was talking about. It tells you the nutritional information of all of the possible snacks. Now, not all of these are going to be in here. Um, and depending on what time of the year you order, what, uh, what type of these snack packs that you get, um, you can get different products in here. But in the front, or on the front of this, you've got all of the nutrition information for those items. And then on the back, you've got all of the descriptions of them as well. So we will see what we encounter when we open up our box. So the shrink wrap is off. Let's open this up and see what it looks like. Uh, the little tab says enjoy. So now we open up and there we go. We actually get another book inside. So that book inside gives us sort of a, a breakdown of all of the different snacks that could be in here with little descriptions uh, on them as well. So we'll see what we encounter as we go along. And here's a look at everything inside of the box. Again, like I said, there are, I believe there are over 20, possibly 30 items in here. Um, so lots of different types of things. Let's see what we get. We have popping candy. Everybody knows popping candy. Of course, we've got Pop Rocks here um, in the United States. Popios, Papios. So uh, that's interesting little popping candy. Then we've got Simit Cracker. There's a look at that one. Simit Cracker. That looks different. Uh, let's see if we can find out what that's all about. Okay, well, we're off to a really good start here because these Simit crackers are not even listed in this book. Um, there is a description for the Papillos, and what it says there is this candy has a surprise waiting for you. As soon as touching your mouth, this candy does not stand your energy and starts to explode one by one. Simply try and find out for yourself. So again, uh, just like Pop Rocks there. Um, these Simit crackers have no description, so we're going to open these up and see what these are. It's kind of a kind of a yeasty aroma coming off of that, sort of like something like a pretzel, but also a little bit nutty. So an interesting aroma there. There's one of those. Simit crackers. Let's give this a taste and see. Oh, so I think the aroma that I was picking up on there that I couldn't quite place was sesame. 
because the flavor is very sesame and I believe you can see the, the sesame on there. Sort of a cross between a pretzel, a cracker, and sesame flavor. Okay, we have another one of those crackers. These are pizza crackers. Now this one actually has a description and this one says, um, not Eddie Pizza, but pizza was first introduced to the, tech, to the Turkish market in early 90s and it was a failure. Turkish people did not like it and almost all pizza restaurants were closed within a few years. This was until Ninja Turtles started to screen on TVs. All of a sudden, Turkish mothers ended up with their children pestering and nagging to have pizza. This gave an opportunity to pizza producers to rise from their ashes. So there we go. We got a pizza flavored cracker there. Um, obviously, um, English is not the first language of the, uh, the people writing these little pamphlets. So um, just be keep that in mind, bear that in mind. We've got a nuts party. <laughs> There we go. So this is um, cheddar and sogun. If you can see that right there. So let's see what it says about the nuts party. Nuts, popped corn kernels, and ball-shaped chips, all covered with an herb mix, either cheddar, onion-flavored, or burning hot. It also has a honey and mustard flavor, which is a new mix for many Turkish snack lovers. So there we go. We've got a cheddar and sogun, don't know, um, nuts party in that one. Um, this one, I think I'm going to have to try, although I'm a little bit scared about this because I saw this one listed in this pamphlet. And the reason that I'm scared is because these are called potty cakes. <laughs> so I'm not sure how I feel about something called potty cakes. But let's get the description on that one, and then we're going to try that. Uh, either carrot, coconut, fruit, or chocolate flavored. These cakes are a great idea if you love puffy stuff. Potty has no meaning in Turkish, but some Turkish people call it as best packaged cake ever. Hope you agree with them. So let us see if this is the best packaged cake ever. I'm assuming we have carrot, because there is a little picture of the carrot on that package. So carrot flavored potty cake. This is a very interesting item. So it is all one piece of a cake. It's sort of like a mini little carrot bread. Um, it's pretty light. It doesn't feel like it's very dense. Um, it has sort of a cake aroma to it, nothing carrot, nothing that would make you think that this was carrot. I mean, just from the look of it, it could be pumpkin, it could really be banana, it could be anything. So here we go, carrot potty cake. Hmm, that is really good. There is a good carrot flavor to it. There, this is as good as any pre-packaged cake that you're gonna get in the United States. I want another bite of this. So I was looking at the ingredients uh, on the back and it actually calls this a carrot and cinnamon cake. And I thought maybe there were pieces of ginger or something in there because there's something a little bit crunchy and a little bit sort of gummy. But I think it might just be the carrot itself and maybe um, sort of, um, it says there could be traces of nuts in there. There might be a, a few nuts in there. But then also that cinnamon, I think, is packed in there pretty tightly. This is good. I would put that up against any prepackaged food brand, any prepackaged snack cake whatsoever in the United States. That is as good as anything that you will get in the United States. Let's cleanse the palate and find a couple more. Okay, we've got Wanted Bumba right there. So I did see that one in our little guide. So this is very invaluable. If you saw my um, Taste of Japan unboxing that I did, the one thing that I was very disappointed in was the fact that it didn't come with a description of all of the items. So I'm very glad to have this. A chocolate bar filled with caramel sauce or coconut and covered with puffed rice. It is the favorite of most consumers in Turkey. So there we go. Little candy bar right there. Wanted Bumba. Um, looks like... This one might be hard to tell. That might be the coconut uh, right there. 
Then we have, well, this is interesting, um, Sin. <laughs> so we, what looks like, um, sort of looks like a pecan pie from that angle. But when you look at it here, you can see that it's more like a cookie. It is very flat. It has an orange uh, or a lemon, maybe a lemon and orange, something like that um, on the um, package there. Um, let's see if I can find that one. Okay, I found that one that is called Sin, the classic one. Sin means genie in English. There we go. Many Turkish people have a superstition that the word sin calls for bad souls, and they never use the word sin in their daily lives, like you know who in Harry Potter series. Turkish people call sin as a three-letter entity, replacement for C-I-N, which accounts for three letters in total. What? <laughs> if someone can explain that to me, I would appreciate it, but I guess this is a genie in cellophane. There we go. Not a genie in a bottle. Okay, we have a little, um, I've seen these before. I, well, I'm assuming that I've seen these before. These, these do look very familiar to things that we see here in the United States where they're sort of that marshmallowy, coconutty, um, little sweet treat. This is called, well, I can't even see what this is called because this actually has a sticker over the uh, the name of it. But let's see if I can find that one. Well, I really don't see that one uh, anywhere in our descriptions, but it does say that you can get a mystery snack. So that might be one of those mystery snacks. The other cool thing about the descriptions here is that they give you a little description of a beverage to eat with the, or to drink with these rather, um, from Turkish coffee, to milk, to soda, to coffee, to tea, to cold beverages. It tells you what goes best with each of the snacks that you're sampling. It okay, seems like a lot of sweet things in here. This one is called coconut. So I'm assuming this is something with coconuts, although it does look like hazelnut right there. We might have to open this one because I absolutely love hazelnut. We're gonna look this one up and see if that is hazelnut. We're trying that one. Okay, coconut. This will crack your nut -ometers. So many nuts squeezed onto a bar of chocolate wafer. A quick note, Turkey accounts for 73% of global hazelnut production. And probably most hazelnuts you have eaten so far have come from Turkey. Well, there we go. I am not sure that I knew that. So I am definitely gonna try this one because I absolutely love hazelnut. It is my favorite type of nut. Uh, so let's see if this has a good hazelnut flavor. I had no idea that most hazelnuts came from Turkey. So there we go. You can see that it has lots of nuts packed uh, all over it right there. And then looks like maybe a dark chocolate. Let's try it. Oh. Mmm. Oh, wow. That is 1000% hazelnut flavor. This is great. Oh, that is so good. That is That one was wonderful. We've got another type of chocolate bar here. It looks like Sorel. Let me see if I can find that one. Sorel. To us, this is the epic one. The goodness hid, be the goodness hid inside the thin layers of wafers, which is only to hold together the creamy hazelnut content. The chocolate bar is so popular that it is almost impossible to find it at convenience stores as it sells out pretty fast during the day. So another hazelnut bar. This one supposedly is even better than that last one. So lots of nice candy bars in here. We've got another candy bar as well. Caramella. There we go. So this one, it looks like it obviously has some type of caramel in the center. Caramella, smooth milk chocolate stuffed with caramel. The name itself is a bit mixed up version of caramel and milk. As you can see, Turkish snack producers take their liberty to mix and match English words to create a unique name for their products. So there we go. Uh, obviously, you're going to have a lot of fun with this product if you get one of these, not only just uh, unpacking it, seeing all the different things, but looking everything up and seeing what each one is. And then you get to try everything. La Viva. Look at that. That looks like solid chocolate. 
La Viva, a new and most welcomed member of Turkish snack family. Ulker La Viva represents the best. A waved-shaped chocolate with an intense biscuit hidden inside has been the go-for option for many snack lovers since its inception. Hope you like it too. Interesting. So lots of chocolate, lots of different types of chocolate there. We've got some uh, biscuits, obviously. Those look like those wafer rolls. Um, we've got some sticks that are dipped in chocolate here. Uh, we've got a snowball. So we've seen snowballs uh, in the United States. This is a Turkish version of a snowball. More candy. Uh, and then this one is, well, it says bitter chocolate 2030. So I'm gonna have to look this one up. Uh, this might be Karam, Karam, let us let me take a look at this one, see what that one's all about, and then I think we've got two more after that. Okay, Karam Gurmi. Gurmi deserves its name, okay? Oh, maybe it's gourmet, maybe it's supposed to be gourmet. It has a very thick chocolate layer with intense cocoa taste. It really goes well with a cup of coffee. I think I'm going to have to hang on to that one until I have some coffee. We suggest not to eat too much sweet after this one. This bar has won the Pleasure Award in Turkey, as we get to know from billboards. We are not sure what that means, but we believe it deserves it. Okay, there's some fun stuff in here. Um, we've also got what look like some pretzel snacks there. And then we've got uh, some taco-flavored Krispies. Those look good, little crackers. Um, we have a burger, Osmo Burger. Uh, we're going to have to find out what this is, obviously. Osmo Burger. Osmo Burger is a funny snack for both kids and adults. It is hamburger-shaped biscuits filled with chocolate cream. Osmo is a cartoon illustration character like Bart Simpson. Okay, now we have to open this one. Apparently that is Osmo. I do not believe that Osmo looks anything like Bart Simpson, but maybe he acts like Bart Simpson. Uh, let's open this up and see. This is a... Oh, the, I, you know, I thought this was going to be one piece of something in there. And it's a whole bag of little hamburgers. So, there we go. There's a little Osmo burger. So, I can feel that they're little biscuit, little crackers... Um, with that filling in there, something chocolatey, I'm assuming, little sprinkles on top there for the uh, the burger bun. Let's try this. Mmm. Mmm. Very sweet. Very hazelnutty. The thing that I am definitely loving about this stuff, I had no idea that turkey was such a big producer of hazelnuts. It's my, like I said, it's my favorite type of nut flavor. I suppose I should have known that, that they all come from Turkey. Um, but everything in here, all of this chocolate is flavored with a hazelnut flavor. So if you are a big fan of hazelnut like I am, you would love something like this. If you don't like hazelnut, maybe you want to look for a product from, if you want to try one of these international boxes, maybe pick one up from another part of the world. Okay, finally, I'm going to try one last thing here. Kit Kat Tat. Uh, so, obviously, this is another hazelnut product. You see the hazelnuts everywhere. Let's get the description on this one. Kit Kat Tat. Croissant-ish bakery in Turkish style, filled with goodness inside. This one comes with different shapes and sizes. It has different flavors other than chocolate. These are strawberry and sesame seed flavors. You can call it deliciousness in every level, as we call it in Turkish, Kit Kat Tat. Some find it tasty, some find it stale. At least they're honest. A controversial yet success-proven snack with a long-standing record of being around for decades in Turkey. You have to love a snack that's put out by a company that says, hey, it might taste stale. Okay, so there it is. Kit Kat Tat. So I have had um, types of uh, 
pastries like this before, types of snacks like these before. They're usually pretty airy inside, pretty light. All of this stuff is pretty light. Um, it's got some sort of um, sugar kind of crystallized baked on the top there. Hazelnut filling, that should be good. Here we go. Mm. I would not call that stale at all. I would call that very pleasant. I do like that. It is very flaky. It's very light um, and it, it very full of hazelnut flavor. Another good one. Turkish munchies, you kept me entertained. You gave me a lot of good snacks, a lot of good flavors, things I've never tried before. I have a bunch of stuff to eat now. I'm going to enjoy all of this stuff. You get a three-star seal of approval. Okay, there we go. Again, that is Turkish munchies. That's the purple box that you see right there. There are other colors that have other items in there. I do have another one of these. I'm going to be doing another one here soon. Uh, check those out. You can get those a variety of different ways. I've seen them in some specialty stores um, where they kind of carry some international products and they tend to have more of like a popular culture type uh, of products, believe it or not. That's where you can usually find these. But the easiest way to get them is to get them through Amazon. Uh, they generally are about $25 to $30, depending on the size of the box that you get. You can get some that have more items that are a little bit more expensive. So check those out. I highly recommend trying these international snacks from around the world. See what else is out there. It's a lot of fun to try some of this stuff. I will catch you next time.